So let me finally introduce myself too. Uh, my name is Dmitry. I automate tests and I teach to automate tests. I started my test automation career about seven years ago and I mostly use Selenium uh, for UI tests. And I also about two, three years ago started to teach uh, Selenium and uh, topics related to the Selenium. I uh, published a few courses online on a few different platforms. And one of my courses is Expat Locators for Selenium, so that's what I wanted to talk about today. Uh, but before we get to Expat, uh, let's talk about locators in Selenium in general. So as you know, or as you heard, if you in any way related to test automation, um, web pages um, have lots of different elements, buttons, drop downs, links. And for Selenium, in order to interact with all those elements, uh, Selenium uses different locator strategies. And when you start learning test automation with Selenium, the locator strategies most likely gonna be one of the first topic of your um, course or whatever you whenever, wherever you learn or trying to learn it. And most of the time, instructors will tell you that ID is the best locator strategy, use ID always. If there is no ID, use name, and so on. And the last one, if you have no choice, only then use expat. Um, next, so, uh, expat versus CSS. Uh, it's a big topic on different automation forums. It's a controversial topic. You will always get into, you know, some kind of argument when, like, same like uh, Android and iPhones, the same way with Xpath and CSS. And, you know, people who like CSS will tell you that it's faster, it's easier to learn. Uh, people who like Xpath will tell you that it's most powerful locator strategies and you will be able to find any element on any page using expat. Um, I chose expat um, just because it looked easier and simpler. Uh, when I you know, came to the point when I had to learn some um, advanced locator strategies in my automation career. So here you are. Uh, people say that CSS is easier. Well, it wa wasn't the case for me. I, I chose expat because it was easier. And at the time, I didn't even know about uh, speed factor and uh, about uh, how powerful XPath was. And only later, when I heard those, I started to do my own research and even did my um, small testing on the XPath speed to see if it's really slow. So, is XPath really slow? <laughs> so I ran a few tests um, to verify, um, to find the same element with CSS and XPath. Um, just a few tests and only thing I learned from those tests that there are much more different variables in test automation that can slow down your tests besides the locator you, you choose. Um, also, while, while on the topic, I found really nice blog post by Dave Hefner, and he did a lot of testing of different, um, of, of comparing uh, CSS and XPath for different uh, web elements. And here, um, these numbers, this is actually the time in seconds for a total run of 100 execution. So basically, 1.13 seconds to find uh, this locator with CSS in Chrome and same in XPath. Uh, if, if you see here for the second locator, the CSS uh, was a little bit faster than XPath, but here CSS was slower than XPath. And the biggest takeaway for me from this table is that in Internet Explorer is much slower than the other browsers. But the CSS and XPath are almost the same. Sometimes one of one faster, sometimes the other is faster. Sometimes they are basically the same. So choosing 
CSS because it's faster, as you see, is not a valid reason. Uh, next one, is XPath really the most powerful out of all locator strategies? Uh, the answer is yes. Uh, there are two things that you can do with XPath, but you cannot with CSS. So with, C with CSS, you're not able to access the content of uh, the elements like text. You cannot use text of the element to find this element on the page. But with XPath, you can. And also with the XPath, you can walk up the DOM. So you can find the child of the element and go to the parent. You cannot do it with the CSS. There are workarounds. Some people use uh, JavaScript to do the same, to, to still be able to use CSS. Uh, but when we're talking about only using CSS versus XPath, well, you, you cannot go to parent of the element with CSS. Now, why I love XPath, why I chose XPath? As I said, because it looked really simple to me. It looked easy to learn and understand. And here's the simple formula uh, that will help you find most of the elements on any web page. And let me explain this uh, formula a little bit. So we start with two forward slashes, which means we are looking for element anywhere on the page. Then tag name such as div, uh, span, a, input, and then in, in square brackets, add attribute name such as ID or class or name, equals, and then in the single quotes, the value of this uh, attribute. And that's how simple to create XPath for simple elements that, that, had, that have attributes. And few examples here. So uh, two forward slashes, div. So we are looking for div element that has ID content. So we could use just find by ID content, but at the same time, we also can use XPath uh, to, to find the same locator. Next one, as you see, there is a star here. The star means uh, we don't care what tag, we're just looking for any element on the page with any tag that has class large 12 columns. Third one, uh, basically the same, same, same formula, we are looking for a link that includes uh, a ref element with uh, pound edit uh, value. Last two are actually examples what we can do with XPath, but we cannot do with CSS. So this one, number four, we are looking for label element that contains text enter message. And this contains here means uh, that enter message is not full text of that element, it's just part of the text. So the text may be enter message here, but we are not using full text, we're just using part of the text of this label element to find this element with this expat. And the last one, so here we have label element that doesn't have any attributes, but it has child div element with ID table. So we are looking for this child element with ID table and then just going up to the parent of this element. So another example, what we can do with XPath, but cannot with CSS. Um, and well, that's it. Um, so which locator strategy to choose? I'm not trying to say that everyone should use XPath. Uh, choosing locator strategies is not the same as choosing programming language to use for your test automation. You can use all eight of them. You can combine them. You can start with ID. If you do not have ID, use name and so on, CSS, and only if you have to, then use XPath. Or you can use XPath for each locator as I do. Uh, and I do it just because my locators in my code just look nice because all of them are consistent. All of them are fine by XPath. So I just do it because I like the way code looks with using only XPath. But you can choose any of it. Um, I just wanted to show you that XPath is not scary, is not slow, and you can use it. Also, uh, if you didn't know, we have our um, Slack group 
here in Central Florida, uh, mostly for test automation, but you know, people without test automation experience, just QA guys also there. And you know, sometimes people post some jobs, open jobs there. Uh, people ask questions about test automation, people answer questions. So if you want, uh, you can join this group. And as I mentioned at the beginning, um, I teach test automation. So, um, and as you see here, the expat course I have is actually the best seller on Udemy. Um, Selenium for web driver course is highest rated. So in case any of you want to start learning Selenium or uh, become a master in expat, you can use this coupon for, for the discount. Uh, but the Udemy changes the way coupons work, so uh, most likely the coupons will stop working in the beginning of beginning of October. So if you want, uh, use it now. And now probably time for questions. I have a question. So can you use XPath for uh, React-based applic applications and Angular-based applications only? Because Angular is mostly powered with CSS. So what's the best scenario to use? Uh, why? Expat don't work for Angular applications. How would you solve this problem? Mm, I think it works. It works. You can use. Um, it's been a long time since I worked with Angular, but I did use Expat. Expat. Um, currently, I am automating the app that is written on React. Right. Um, there is no problem with locator strategy. There are other prob problems with Selenium actions in general with React when you're trying to type text into the field and as soon as you move to the next field or click on the button text just disappears it's just because selenium actions does not fire the react events uh, that should actually save the text or click that button but there are workarounds you just have to play with it Espe that's the problem especially if you automate tests on mobile browsers especially on ios devices uh, but you can use expat locators if i mean every page has an html that's why you can use XPath. XPath is just, you know, uh, basically XML path, HTML, XML path, almost the same thing. Thank you. Hey, do you mind if I uh, add a few things? And I don't want to, I know you have a whole course. And that, and that's oh, cool, go ahead. There, there's, a, there's a couple. So, you know, XPath, I'm, I've been using it. I got into it, you know, I've been using it for over 10 years or whatever. So, and like I said, there's a, there's a whole, you know, section W3C on it, just XPath. And if you look at it, it's amazing. It's actually an incredible language. And it has XQuery on top of it where you can actually, everything is driven by XPath with XQuery. So, and, it, and it's how XML, it's how people use XML. It's how developers use it and everything else. But there's, <coughs> with XPath, if you, if you learn it, one of the other great things about it is you can use it for API testing and stuff too. So everything's JSON these days, right? JSON comes back all over the place. It's sent and, and received through the browser. Uh, so if uh, XPath and JSON, there's uh, there's a lot of different ways to to convert the two back and forth. They're both hierarchical structural representations of data, and there's there's you can there's a tool called BaseX. So write that down. <laughs> <laughs> download it, it's free, and it's awesome. It can help you learn this stuff really great. Um, there, it comes with the, uh, it comes with the XML. It's a data, it's an XML database, has a web server in, it's embedded, and it lets you do XQuery and XPath, and you can do all kinds of great things on it. If you have a Selenium environment, as you're, as you're crawling through pages and doing things, sometimes people write their uh, output to a file or whatever, with BaseX, it has bindings through any language, and you can write, you can write the whole structure, the whole HTML page to the database as structured data, not just a file, and it's immediately queryable. Okay, so with the ba BaseX is a great tool. It has a UI, and you can put XPath and XQuery right in it. It's a, very interchangeable. But one of the great things, let's say, say you're doing a, a API testing, or both, you have a hybrid. You're doing some Selenium stuff, and you want to make sure the response is good or, or whatever. Uh, you can and you can write that to the database, and you can go in and you can take the if it's just in JSON, you can convert it to XML and use XPath to find things in JSON. So let's just say you want to find an expression. 
I want to make sure that this JSON contains ID of this, date of that, and a further down structure, this, that, and the other, parent, whatever, it doesn't matter, right? You can go up, down, all around. It's, I always think about the horse and the chessboard. I mean, you, <laughs> you can find anything. So if you, if you have API, you take your XML or your JSON, you convert it to XML, you can use XPath expressions to find stuff in API. So you, it's not just like you can use it for locators, which is primarily what, there's also a whole different world out there. I've taken it to the nth level where I'm actually, I develop software using this database and I don't even use Python and stuff anymore. Once I started using it and using XQuery and XPath, it opened up a whole new world of, of you know, dealing with structured data um, and, and doing stuff like that. So it really is, it, XPath is a really great building block. You start with locators and you can go in XQuery, it's a full programming language, there's like tons of stuff in it. And, and just a little trick, this is very important for XPath and it probably in this course. But some, so in XPath, you're either gonna get one node back or many nodes or a collection, right? You either get one thing or a collection. If you get a collection, and you want to get the third thing in the collection or the third list in the thing, you have to put the things in parentheses, mm -hmm. okay? It's a grouping, you know that, but it's one of those things that will, will blow your mind when you're trying to do locators because, oh, why, why is it always giving me the first element that out of this list? I'm looking for LI3, LI bracket three, and it's always giving me the first one every time. Well, you have to group that before the brackets at the start of expression gotta put it in parentheses. Then it'll give you the third element of that list or whatever. So that's just a little, you know, so just wanted to say all that, you know, because it is a giant thing. The basics tool is great and you can, you know, write HTML, you can write XQuery, you can actually send queries back and forth to it with their web server and it's just, it's, it's really cool. So on top of Slam and everything else, you do API. So there's a whole lot of good reasons to learn XPath and, and use it. Anyway, that's my two cents. <laughs> 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 I, it is one of my soapbox topics, I mean, because I really got into it. Just um, validated everything you, you said, know. so. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, thanks. Any more questions? <laughs> yeah, What's go. like a really complex situation that you've solved for that spec? Uh, probably just the size of the expat I had to write, you know, find <laughs> some child element and then go to grandparent to move to the sibling and then go down uh, to some child, another child of those grandparent. So basically, you know, table of elements without any attributes. But then I have, to, I had to find some one element with the attribute <coughs> that I could use to then starting from there, go up, down, left, right, to the element I actually need. So yeah, that's, you know, nothing else can help you find that element when, when you use Selenium. Is that often the case, like when all the other locators fail, you can use XPath, yeah. like getting like, like you just said, like, like the, the third cousin twice from yeah. the mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> And what if XPath fail? Huh? What, what if XPath fail? There's no such thing. <laughs> 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 what languages are? <laughs> um, well, there, there was, I worked with a UI that compiled the JavaScript at runtime and it changed every single time. Mm -hmm. So it was, it, you really just couldn't, but they actually have libraries for Selenium built right in, so you can use it. But mm -hmm. that, like the ISO, it's isomorphic smart GWT and smart client library and it's a UI. With, but anyway, if the more compiling they do at runtime, the more stuff just, it's totally random on the fly, but uh, they build their own little special thing. But yeah, anything else, right? I mean, you can always find it. I have a question too. So, will you prefer ID over expat if you have ID? I would use expat with that ID. Okay. Yeah. Why to use um, expat with ID if expat already has ID? Why not? Can you not use the ID itself? Uh, just for the code to look nice for each locator to start with by expat and so each locators are built in the same way in, in the code that's that's the reason I use expat for all my locators so, so they all look just for similar. consistency yes right? yes yeah. 
Also, Selenium doesn't support the uh, locator strategy by ID. It only support by XPath, CSS, link tags, partial link tags, and tag. So if you pass as ID, then it converts into the CSS value and okay, send yeah. it to the driver. Yeah, that's the true. Yeah. That's true, yeah. The same with the class. If you pass by the class name, it actually converts it into the CSS. Oh, I mean, you can pass. save it in the code as by ID, yeah, just yeah. the behind, how it works right. behind. Right. But I mean, you can say by ID, by name, by link tags, and so right. on. So like, like you just said, most of those are just using the CSS and then XPath is its own. I mean, I, I guess I guess the guys who created this just make it made it easier for for people who use Selenium to you know yeah. write code. Yeah. They should add more functions. Well, they will. <laughs> uh, Jim, last time Jim said the next element. Uh, so I, I have a question, but it's more for people who are here. Does anyone use link text, partial link text? I never seen anybody use it. What is that? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> it's either ID or XPath, sometimes class, and CSS, of course. Oh, I don't mm. think it's reliable. Yeah. You can use it inside of XPath also. Just, you know, con the element contains text. Contains it. Right, yeah, but by, by, itself. Of, by, yeah, by itself, link text, partial link text. N I think nobody uses it, right? Well, people, people that do not know how to use XPath or CSS, probably do. But eventually they still have to learn one of those at least. So eventually they give up. Uh, but people who just start learning Selenium, I guess they use yeah, link text and partial link text. Um, on the other hand, if you think about like what's more risky to use the link <coughs> or to use the uh, structure of the DOM, what changes more, f more often? Well, the, the link, or actually, like someone add the child element and your X pass or CSS fails, but link well, actually doesn't if change that often. <coughs> if you think from this perspective, well, I do not have it as part of this presentation, but XPath, there are two types of XPath. Uh, I forget how they called absolute relative. Absolute and relative, yeah. So this is relative XPath. You don't care because of these two. Uh, forward slashes, you don't care where you start. Right. And you are using only one. So in this example, in simple example, you're using only one uh, HTML element. You don't care if anything added in front or behind or left or right. You don't care. Uh, this will not break. If you have to use uh, absolute expat or at least you know go from child as, as five, we were five, talking five, about, uh, uh, whereas there's Whereas there are no more option but to go from child to grandparent than to move to second cousin. In that case, it's fragile, mm -hmm. but you don't have any <coughs> other option in that case. You cannot use even CSS. Yeah, I think if you have like, I don't know, seven, eight parent-child relationships or you have just a link text, I think <coughs> in this situation, just by the link, it's actually might be more reliable than yeah. well, um, going through like five, six steps in the DOM. If the links, ha if the link has text, you can use XPath. That's true. So you cannot use CSS, but you can use XPath. <coughs> you almost always answer, "Can I do this by XPath?" Right? Yeah. So not w not wondering how to do it, just start. Uh, is XPath the only uh, locator strategy that allows for like logic logical uh, operations within the query itself? No, CSS also allows. It. Okay. You can do or and in CSS also. Okay. But the, but the CSS also have like those other functions that XPath provides. Where they um you know uh, I can't remember some like like a lot of the the string manipulation functions that, that XPath might provide the CSS does that as well too? Um, it does, yeah. yeah. It, it's, you, and, and it's straightforward, intuitive, all that stuff. They have a whole ton of string. You can use regex with strings. Right. You can match, you could, I mean, recursive functions, loop, I mean, it's just everything you ever want. It's a whole, it's a, you know, Turing complete programming language in itself. There's another great reason to use it, but yeah, I mean, it's everything. Yeah. Well, it's basically, yes, yeah, CSS as powerful as XPath, except these two cases. Okay. 
Is it not over engineering, like uh, because of uh, problems in architecture of modules of uh, parts of the website? Because in CSS, for example, you have these uh, pseudo selectors. Yeah. The child, parent selector. You can select them from these pseudo selectors and yeah, you yeah. Can do and pretty the same. Mm, but it will be like tricky because like. It is not possible to do some regex or something like that. Oh yeah, uh, and I mean, but at the same time, you can also do it with XPath. And at when it comes to this point, it's only a matter of choice who prefers what. Yeah. yeah. With regex, <laughs> like you will have another problem. <laughs> it is like tricky to understand later, like what was exactly. In this regex. So I have comments. Well, one, one thing with regex <laughs> is <laughs> are always outdated. You know? yeah. Verification is huge with this thing. So if yeah. you're going to verify text or whatever, yeah, like X, with an XPath, you have yeah. an entire programming language built in. One statement verify, and you can use regex, you can chain the stuff together. You don't have, so most of the programming you do in Python or any other language. You don't need, you really don't. All you need to do is find a thing and have one well-written express <coughs> to say, to verify text, verify this, verify that. What's, is, is the structure correct? You can have multiple ones and yeah, so that's the one thing, you, you know, a lot of the stuff you use your, your, your language for that you're driving for, you really don't even need technically because XPath is so powerful, you know. Yeah, does CSS have some advantages or something that it can do that XPath can't? Um, the only thing that comes to my mind that a lot, a lot of people say why they like CSS is that basically every web developer already knows CSS. And if you have problems and you cannot find locators or you, you need to show your code to the developer to help you automate the thing, for him, it's going to be probably much more easier to understand your locators if they are in CSS. So basically, it's it doesn't have more advantages other than that and speed. Well, also, speed is not also right, not uh, the yeah, case. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. myth. Yeah, right, myth. Um, okay. I personally had the issue with the X pass on IE. Sometimes, maybe in like two percent of the cases, it doesn't find the X pass doesn't find element on IE when I switch to CSS. It works like a charm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know why is it dot net bindings because you use Java, right? So you mm -hmm. never had that issue. Maybe it's dot net bindings. I don't know why, but what uh, version of IE? Older. Uh, I mean, eleven or 11? ten, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I don't remember. Problem with like the this. bindings. I remember. I pro store for C sharp. It's another topic for conversation. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> you need to invite Jim for that. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> Selenium couldn't find yeah. element oh, in IE, so. or you could not. Detect manually detect. No, I can manually detect, but it doesn't return when you search for the element. It doesn't return anything. I think my best guess would be it's a timing issue and weight issue, not the X path. But I mean, I don't know. I, I have to see the case to you know give some input. Anything else? Nope. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.